Welcome to the Skills Commons repository. This video was created to assist you with the single item submission process for the learning resource material collection within your TACT grant community. In this video, we will cover how to contribute learning resource materials to the Skills Commons repository. Let's get started. Open your web browser and go to www.skillscommons.org. In the main menu at the top of the page, click on Contribute. Sign into Skills Commons using the username and password you were given. If you do not have a username and password, just click on the Click Here to Register link, fill out the form, and an account will be created for you. You will be notified via email when your account is set up. So let's go ahead and sign in. Once you sign in, you will be taken to the Submissions and Workflow Tasks page. Click on Start a New Submission, then select the collection that you would like to make your submission to. In this case, we will select Learning Resource Collection and click the Next button. The single item submission process for learning resource materials is a seven step process that allows you to enter all the metadata about your material, upload the associated files, review your submission, review and accept the terms of service, and then submit the item to the repository. Enter as much information about the item as you can in order to help others to find it. For this tutorial, we are going to upload an online course, but I want to take a moment here to say that you can upload all types of materials. You will see when we get to the end of the submission process that you will be able to upload any materials that are associated with this submission. You can upload videos, audio files, Word documents, PDFs, Excel spreadsheets, any number of items and file types. In this example, we are uploading a full course that has been extracted and compressed into a zip file. So let's begin by entering our data. The title of our item is Biology 101, the full course. For project name, you're going to enter the official name for your project from the TACT grant proposal. So go ahead and enter that here. Next, you will select from the drop-down menu the name of the institution responsible for creating this resource. Next, you will enter the copyright owner if it is different than the grantee institution selected in the field above. If it's the same as the grantee institution, you can go ahead and leave it blank. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. In the next field, we're going to enter the names of the individuals that are credited with the creation of the resource. So I'm going to actually enter, we have three authors, so I'm going to enter them here. And to enter multiple values, you're going to click on the Add button. So we've entered Donald Smith. We're going to enter Mary Jones and click Add. And we're going to enter, oops, we're going to enter Sarah Watson. So let's just say that I realize actually now that Donald Smith isn't an author. I can go ahead and remove him here by selecting his name and then clicking Remove Selected. And then we can move on. So now we're going to select the primary license. So select the, the license that applies to the work as a whole. Most of the resources will be CC BY, which is the default choice. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that. And then you can select additional licenses. So if there were third party resources in the work that are offered under a different license from the one you've selected above, you could indicate that here. And also take a moment here to note that 
Commercial and copyrighted works cannot be uploaded to the repository, so do keep that in mind when you're entering your submissions. So I'm going to go ahead and select two other licenses, and I can do that by holding down the control or the shift key. And then for primary material type, I'm going to select the pre predominant type or kind that characterizes this learning resources, learning resource. So this is an online course. And then I can select secondary material types. So within this online course, we could have an animation. We could have a case study. We could have a presentation, a quiz, and the like. So go ahead and do the same thing by holding down the control or the shift key and selecting um, if you have multiple secondary material types. The next field is description. So use this field to describe the material in as much detail as possible. A detailed description helps users decide if it's an appropriate material for their use. So be as specific as possible so others can understand what the material is about. I'm going to go ahead and add in the course description. The next field is course or program note. So if you were uploading material, say a simple quiz, then you could indicate here what course or program to which that item belonged. But since we are actually uploading a full course, I'm going to go ahead and leave this blank. But if you have this information, you can go ahead and add it here. The next field is the date created. The year is required, so go ahead and make sure you enter in the year. The month and the day are not required, but if you do have that information, you can add it. Then you're going to select your tacked round. And then you're going to enter your industry partner or your employer partner. And you can briefly describe how they collaborated with your project. For industry sector, you're going to select the NAICS code that is covered by this resource. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the first one I see. Then for the occupation classification, you're going to select the relevant SOC code. So we can go ahead and scroll and just pick something. Then for instructional program classification, you're going to select the relevant SIP code. So I'm going to go ahead and select, there it is, Physical Sciences. Then go ahead and select the credit type to which this resource was originally applied. And the same goes for the credential type. Select the educational level of the material. And then select the interactivity type. You have active, presentation only, or mix of active and presentation. For quality of subject matter, check the boxes indicating how subject matter experts were used to assure the quality of the instructional content. Then for quality of online hybrid course design, check the boxes indicating how you assured the quality of the online hybrid learning resource for the students. And you can check all the boxes that apply. So here we finish with page one. We can save and exit, or we can move on to page two. So we're going to go ahead and move on to page two. So go ahead and select the quality rubric that was used to measure the quality of the learning resource. And then you can provide a written description of the process used to ensure quality. You can also upload a document describing this process in the file upload section at the end. So I'm just going to put a little text in here. Subject keywords help users define materials in the repository. Enter multiple keywords by clicking the Add button after each keyword or phrase. So I'm just going to add a couple here.
Oops. Okay, so we've got just a couple here, but you're going to want to add um, multiple and appropriate subject keywords to help others find your material. So for language, select the language of the main content of the item. If the content doesn't really have a language, for example, it's a data set or an image, you can just select NA. Then enter the time required. So provide the approximate or typical time it takes to work through this learning resource. So we're going to say that this is a 12 week course. So here, if the resource is available online, openly, and free for use, enter the URL here. This is a great field to enter, as it will allow someone to preview the material before they decide to download it. So if you have this information, um, please do include it, because it will be very helpful and useful for those searching the repository for materials. I'm just going to go ahead and put in any URL here, um, just so we can move through the process. So then for the next one, here you can enter the URLs of the resources that were used in the creation of this resource. So if you used other openly licensed materials to create this derivative work, then you can enter it here. So like I said, I'm just going to you know, put in a URL so that we can move forward. So here we have finished page two, and we can go back and make changes to the previous page. We can save and exit and come back later, or we can move forward. We're going to go ahead and move forward and click Next. So now we're on page three, and this is where you'll enter the accessibility information about the materials. Accessibility and ADA compliance is a critical concern for many institutions and instructors. And so the more information you can provide on the accessibility features of your material, the better. If your organization has a formal accessibility policy, you can put the URL here. And if they have an accessibility statement, you can enter that here. And if you have an accessibility evaluation report, you can enter that here. The remaining fields describe different accessibility features. Simply select yes for any that apply. You don't have to select no unless you have accidentally clicked yes. So I'm going to go ahead and just select a few of these that apply and just show you that if you have accidentally selected yes to something, you can go back and select no but you don't have to select no um, if they don't apply, but you do have to select yes if they do apply. So I'm just going to scroll through, select the ones that apply, just so you can see when we get to the final submission how this all shows up. I'm going to keep going. There are quite a few here, so do take your time and read each one, but for this purpose, I'm just going to kind of click through. Okay, so now we're at the end of page three. We can once again go back and review and change. We can save and exit, or we can click next. We're going to go ahead and click next. So on the next page, you will be able to browse for and upload your materials. So go ahead and click on the browse button and select the material that you would like to upload. So I'm going to select this Biology 101 online course, which has been zipped up. And then I'm going to put a description of the file. Biology 101 course. And I'm going to go ahead and click Upload, File, and Add Another to show you that you can upload multiple files. In this case, I would normally just be uploading this zip file, but I want to take this opportunity to show you how to upload multiple files. So I'm going to click Upload File and Add Another.
and this will take a few minutes, and there it is. So now you see that we have this Biology 101 course that's been placed in a zip file. Now if I wanted to add another item, I could just browse again, select another file. So I'm just going to select this little text document, and let's give it a little name, Quiz Study Guide, and we'll click on Upload File. So now you see we have the two files here. So if you were uploading multiple files, you have the opportunity to, to indicate which one is the primary file. So you would select that using this radio button. Now I'm going to actually go ahead and delete this file because it, it really isn't relevant to my submission. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and then click Remove Selected. And now let's just say I noticed maybe there was a typo here and I wanted to edit this file that I've uploaded. So I can go ahead and click on edit. And let's just say, you know, I wanted to add something else here. Biology 101 course extract. And here you can also set an embargo date, and we have a separate tutorial on that, so I'm not going to go into it here. I'm just actually going to edit the file name, and I'm going to click Save. So here we have Biology 101 course extract. So we're set now. We can go ahead and move on to the next page. I'm going to go ahead and click Next, but as like before, you could go previous, you could do save and exit, come back later. We're going to go ahead and click next. So on the next page, you can review the information that you entered and make any changes that you need to. So you can look through, this is the information that you have entered on page one. You can look through and make sure everything is correct. If you need to correct one, just click correct one of these. Then we have page two. So you can click correct one of these. And page three was the accessibility. So you can look through that and make sure. And once again, if you need to correct something, you can click this button. And then again here on the upload files, if you want to correct one of these, maybe add additional files or you noticed a typo or you remembered something, go ahead and click this and you'll be taken back to this page. So we're actually going to go ahead and click next. And this takes us to the Terms of Service page. So this is the last step. So you're going to need to go ahead and read through and agree to the Terms of Service. So go ahead and click I grant the Terms of Service and then click Complete Submission. So now your submission is complete. You can go back to the submission page and view the submission that you just created, or you can submit another item. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the submission page. And here we see the Biology 101 submission that we just entered. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And now you see how all the information is displayed. We have the title, the authors, the description. This is the file that you uploaded. And here is all the information that we entered. So you have successfully completed your first submission. Congratulations! For additional videos and tutorials, please visit our Support Services Center at www.skillscommons.org. If you have questions or need assistance, please feel free to contact us at support at skillscommons.org.